Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Performance Tester Certification. We are in chapter four talking about performance testing task and this is to get into the part two of our next segment that is 4.4 analyzing results and reporting. As a part of our previous tutorial, that is part one of this section, we spoke about how to analyze results in terms of gathering the necessary matrices, making use of them, consolidating, and coming with certain outcomes which may be in terms of having a good decision to be made that whether the performance was up to the mark or not. We generally covered a lot many things in order to understand that what are those set of matrices which you can capture like status of simulated users, response time, you can talk about the transactions per second and a lot many other things related to that. But today we are talking about the second half of it as a part of this tutorial where we will be getting into the reporting. Now reporting of course is a very generic term which anybody can understand that when you put it across to certain stakeholders in a presentable manner is what you call it as reporting. Now analysis of the results are consolidated and compared against the objectives stated in the performance test plan. Now you should have definitely planned that what will be your way of reporting it and how would you do that and how you will be presenting it to the rest of the stakeholders. This may be reported in overall test status report together with the other results or included in a dedicated report for performance testing alone. So that's up to you. If you have a minimal effort applied for performance testing, then you can put it together with the overall test report. Or if you think you have done a great job or major efforts towards performance testing, or it needs consistently to be added, then of course you may have a dedicated report for performance testing. The level of details reported should match the needs of the stakeholder. Then you should recall that there are different stakeholders. We have business stakeholder, we have technical stakeholders, so details must be addressing them appropriately. The recommendation based on these results typically address the software release criteria or required performance improvement. Now, of course, if everything goes good, you will release it. If not, what improvements need to be changed? Now, when it comes to typical report, which generally talks about performance testing report, what it can basically consist of. So there are several things which you can talk about in order to form or create a performance testing report. The number one thing is executive summary. Now, executive summary basically stands for a section which is completed once all performance testing has been done and all results have been analyzed and understood. This goal, the goal is to present concise and understandable conclusions, findings and recommendations for the management with the goal of an actionable outcome. So executive report is basically for the higher layer of management and this is just to tell them that what was the overall outcome of performance testing, what is your inference on that and how exactly we can push it forward with any actionable items which could be important for us to do as a part of like recommendations, improvements to the performance and what necessary steps can be taken in order to do that. The second important part is to talk about the test results itself, like what exactly you got as an outcome during the execution. So test results may include some or all of the following which is written here. Number one, a summary providing an explanation and elaboration of the result, which could be a summary talking about the overall thing. Results of a baseline that serves as snapshot of the system performance at given time and form the basis of comparison with subsequent tests. So there should be a snapshot which is more of a like uh, what you started with and when you do subsequent tests, you may compare whether it has improved or it's still the same. As far as you have a snapshot for referral, you may not be able to say that whether your subsequent activities is really adding a new value to the system or not. The results should include the date and time this, the test started, the concurrent user goals, the throughput measured, and the key findings in this. Key findings may also include overall error rate measured, response time, and average throughput. So these are all our generic parameters which we generally test as a part of the performance testing and does make a lot of sense when it comes to uh, categorizing them under the test results. A high-level diagram showing an architectural component that could or did impact the test objectives. So of course, the architecture is the core 
input or core thing to talk about in terms of defining the performance outcome. So the performance another way around can be said that it completely depends on the design or the architecture created. Now the architecture snapshot will basically help you understand that what area was actually the one which impacted your performance or could have been a problem in future. A detailed analysis including tables and charts of the test results showing response times, transaction rates, error rates and performance analysis which will be for anyone interested to do a deeper dive into the results and outcome can definitely look into that. So as far as we have a summary they will definitely derive the inference from there but what if somebody is interested to do a deeper dive you can definitely include the details of it in more uh, presentable manner like tab tables or charts which can give them a detailed understanding of the same. Now the analysis also includes a description of what was observed such as at what point a stable application became unstable and the source of failure. So I think these are all pretty much uh, clear and to the point being specific that what you should be capturing as a part of the test results. Coming up next is the test logs and information recorded during the performance test can also be included as a part of the reporting for performance test. The log of each test run should be recorded and the log typically includes the following that is date time of the test start, test duration, scripts used for testing and relevant script configuration data, test data files used by the test, name and location of data or log files created during the test, hardware and software configuration tested, especially if there is any specific changes done between two different runs, average and peak CPU and RAM utilization on the web and database servers, notes on achieving any performance goals and defects identified if any. So you generally capture all these things as a part of a log for any particular test which you execute and definitely can be a part of your overall uh, reporting of the performance test. Finally, coming to the recommendations, which definitely be part of your reports, uh, which can say that no matter what we achieved as an end goal of the performance testing being performed, but there are certain recommendations which we can always uh, share during the reporting part. So here, a recommendation resulting from the test may definitely include following uh, whatever is written here. Technical changes recommended like such as reconfiguring hardware or software or network infrastructure, which can improvise the performance further. Areas identified for further analysis, for example, analysis of the web server logs to help identify root cause of issues or errors. Additional monitoring required of gateways, servers, networks, so that more detailed data can be obtained for measuring performance characteristics and trends especially like when it comes to degradation. As far as it is upgrading, that doesn't make any sense. But if the performance is degraded, we generally look to forward to have some more detailed capturing of certain statistics to define that what could have pretty much, uh, you know, gone wrong in order to have such outcomes uh, from the execution. So putting it all together, reporting does consist of many things to be included as a part of it and uh, should be considered from the point of the business or the technical stakeholder point of view. And we conclude the information necessary for both the users, both the stakeholders, so that they have everything what they need to uh, derive from the outcome of this. Well, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.